I, uh, yeah, no, I can't come in today. <clears throat> yeah, I know there's lots of business to be done, but I just... <sighs> i got diarrhea. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah, business. Oh, lots of emails come in this week. Thank you for all of them. Thank you for all of them, but... I've had many asking, why is UK food so bad? And I've also had a few of these as well. What is better, US or UK food? Lots of love, a few people. Now we all know Indian cuisine is probably the best, but we're gonna compare two countries that are probably a bit lower on the list of best foods, best cuisines. However, they're pretty high on the list for most obesity and heart related deaths. So there you go is what it is. I'll find an answer. That's what a high power businessman like me does. Hello, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I've decided today to approach this a bit differently. I did live in the US of A and I enjoyed the food out there very much, but I was eight years old and went to Taco Bell on Wendy's. So I'm probably not in the best place to critically or geographically analyze it. So what I'm gonna do is put my case forward for UK food. I'm gonna vouch for us over here. What I want you to do is to send me your arguments for US food. It could be in a video clip form, voice notes, uh, pictures, messages, whatever. Vouch for your food. Tell me why I'm wrong with UK food. And if you're from the UK, what have I missed? What have I got right? What have I got wrong? I want to hear everything. And in two weeks time, I'll be putting a video together with all that information in and then come to a conclusion. What is better, UK or US food? But for now, here are 10 reasons why I think UK food is actually pretty, you know, fine. Pretty okay. Fry up. Let's start with the first meal of the day. Whilst you lot are waking up to your pancakes with terrible bacon, we're down the greasy spoon, hungover, telling tales of last night's antics whilst eating breakfast. Yeah, sure, it has got some breakfast items. Eggs, bacon, toast, fried bread even. It's also a full dinner as well. Beans, mushrooms, tomatoes, chips, peas sometimes, spinach if you're feeling healthy. Oh, and black pudding, which is essentially a blood sausage. And you say we have small portion sizes. Get down to Shepherd's Place Farm in Doncaster for the Terminator free breakfast with its 12 rashers of bacon, 12 sausages, 12 eggs, 12 slices of black pudding, 12 hash browns, and 12 pieces of buttered toast. Picnics. Pretty simple. We put a mat down, get out the tinnies and have a picnic. You may be thinking, we have alfresco dining here. No mate. There's a specific set of foods that will be consumed at a picnic. Pork pies, egg and cress sandwiches, crisps, scotch eggs, cocktail sausages, bon, 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 bon. and a Mr. Kipling for pudding. Extra points if you're down by the seaside and you get sand in the sandwiches and then you're picking it out your teeth for the rest of the day. Sponge and stodge. Not sure what pudding means out there, but when we say pudding, we mean it like it sounds. Just layers and layers of stodginess. It's the last thing you'd ever want at the end of a meal, as it's so instantly filling. But for some reason, it's always a perfect end to the night. If you enjoy spending your evenings creased over with stomach cramps, these are the puddings for you. Yeah, so absolutely forgot to film some parts of the video, so just trying to relax and have to come out and f have to come out and film the rest now. So here I am. Hi. Um, what am I even saying? There's um, oh, we're going to play a game now. Um, I'm going to put some pictures of puddings here in the UK that we have here in the UK. Speak to camera that we have here in the UK. And you have to guess. You've got three seconds to guess what they're called. So get ready. Three, three, two, one, guess. That's easy. That's a crumble. That one's a jam roly poly. That's bread and butter pudding. That's bread and butter pudding. Mm. Oh, I, you loves. That one's a figgy pudding. That one is a spotted dick. 
That one is a fly's graveyard. And that final one is a barn brack. I want to know! But... Even our summer puddings have sponge fingers in them, like the classic trifle. Honestly, yes, these look horrible, on the whole. But they are amazing. Imagine bonfire night, outside in the cold, watching the fireworks. Get some custard. Hot custard, but I like cold too. Put it on top of one of these stodgy, stodgy puddings. And really, there's not much better. Why not have one for your main? How about a steamed steak and kidney pudding? No? <coughs> Immigration. This country is ever-changing from Romans to Angles to Vikings to French, with its already existing pockets of Celts and Scots, Picts, etc. Yeah, there's a specific Britishness, and that is the melting pot of culture. Now, of course, a lot of this comes from colonialism. Our tea was sweetened with the sugar from the sugarcane slave trade. And it's a record the country should always uh, hold itself to account to. It should always be spoken about and never forgotten. The unofficial national dish of the country is the chicken tikka masala. And although it is debated by some food historians, it was probably invented here in the UK. The Windrush generation brought over Caribbean foods. And there's a great article on Vice that I've linked down below. I have travelled well, and there's nowhere I've been to yet that has such an array of smells and flavour within such a short radius. You could walk one mile through one London market and travel the world. Chocolate. What is up with your rank chocolate? It's disgusting. Roast dinner. Yeah, that Thanksgiving dinner you have. We have it every Sunday, but with Yorkshire pudding, so nothing you ever do will top it. Pies and pasties. In the Cornish tin mines, the pasty was adopted as a meal the miners could have that would nourish them for their toil. It would use cheap ingredients like potato and swede. In those days, very little mince due to economic reasons. And they also had a handle they could dispose of, so they did not ingest the arsenic on their fingers. Pies are pretty common around the country too, from the sweaty terraces of the football stadiums to the motorway service stations. And Boris actually gets served a blackbird and peasant pie every Tuesday, I believe it is, at number 10 Downing Street. Afternoon tea, tea, cream tea and crumpets. We are known for tea, brought over en masse by the East India Company in the 17th century. It was seen as a high class drink initially, but the lower classes wanted tea so bad there was a huge illegal tea trade until the tax on tea was brought way down by William Pitt the Younger, the Prime Minister at the time. And from there, we've been a nation of tea drinkers ever since. Pair it with some sandwiches and some macaroons and some other little fancy bits on small little plates. You got yourself an afternoon tea. Here's one I've had before and yeah, no surprise that gave me IBS. Put some Marmite on those sandwiches and you've got yourself the best time of your life. There's many ways you can have Marmite and if you've never tried it, it's quite the experience. My favourite particular weird Marmite dish is a piece of toast with Marmite and butter and a fried egg on top. Yes. Marmite is made with yeast. Also, how about scones? Clotted cream, jam. And there's a bit of a there's a bit of a to-do about what's the best way to have these. Jam on the bottom or the cream on the bottom? I believe it differentiates between Devon and Cornwall, and there's actually been wars about it. PS, crumpets are the single best thing we've ever done. British diversity. Yeah, the US is a pretty big bit of land, I'll give you that. And yeah, you can have some diverse foods, sure, but think how small we are and how diverse everything can be in such a short space. Look at this map here. It shows 18 different ways of saying bread roll just within our country, just within the British Isles. Bread roll, do you call it bread roll out there? No, you, you're more sort of, you say what you see, don't you? R round round yeasty risen yeast I don't know what you call it let me know but just go through the map and you'll find local delicacies from the aforementioned pasties of Cornwall coal in Wales Eccles cake Bakewell tart chicken parmo a proper Irish stew with wheat and bread and haggis neeps and tatties up in Scotland <coughs> seaside food for down by the seaside and finally nothing beats the British seaside the smell of the sea water the sounds of the tide ebbing and flowing. The cries of pain as people run to the shoreline in bare feet over stones. 
but it's the food that makes it. It's the cockles and mussels and whelks. The fish and chips, probably our national dish with mushy peas and a deep fried Mars bar for afterwards. And of course, a stick of rock. The stick of rock, yeah, the thing you'd bring back to your friends so they'd know where you've been because they could read the town name through the middle of it. Eyes watering from the intense tooth pain. Chewing one of these causes. The best days of my life were down there. Changing from my shorts to swimming trunks, embarrassed as dad held a towel round me. He'd keep pretending he was going to drop it. The heavy-headed, sunscreen-drenched lethargy of a long drive home. Day turns to twilight, just as quickly as childhood turns to adulthood. Your turn. Please look and subscribe. Whatever. Cheers.